were driving from uh, Bombay to Nasik and um, my and there was a car accident my whole family was in the car my mom passed away in the accident i know for a fact how many lives i managed to change via made in heaven and it is not the the the, the star not at all. kids fault coming to the responsibility of of balancing things out yes again it comes it falls on the media uh, they have to support na people without the backing star kids are the ones that the only ones that they want to follow from the time they are age 3 80 you know i didn't want to be an embellishment in a star vehicle which also i did a bit of hi arjun welcome to the quaint and thank you so much for making the time for thank this thank you swati thank you for having me you know arjun before we talk more about your career and your days in the city when you yeah. came to become an actor i would love to talk to you a little bit about your childhood what were you like as a child first few years of my life were spent in uh, in shrinagar yeah. in kashmir where my dad started his career as a hotelier and uh, he used to work at the obroy palace what was the obroy palace then okay now it's called the lalit these are like early 80s i was born in 81 right so those are the days where all the films were shooting in kashmir yeah. you know and they were all the crews and cast and crew were staying at the obroy palace like satya pe satta for example was shot wow. like at like one of those barnyard yeah yeah places which was part of the property of the same hotel and you know like my dad was like gm at the place so yeah. all the actors is like they would go to him with all their requirements but i basically grew up in old delhi in civil lines i was about 10 years old when uh, we moved to bombay my dad started working uh, in uh, church gate at the ambassador hotel oh, okay. the one with that revolving yes, restaurant yes. and in in delhi like those growing up years yeah star struck as hell of course right. like bollywood movies is what it was about Like I watched Teza, like uh, Jabaz, yeah. right? As a kid, I was okay. so taken by how stylish Anil Kapoor was in that yeah. film. I made my mom buy me a pair of like boots, yeah. high boots I call them, and I used to go to sleep in those. <laughs> and then I would wake up in the morning and like my first question would be, "Mere baal to nahi kharaab hoye?" <laughs> we went through a family tragedy in '95. We were driving from uh, Bombay to Nasik, and um, my and there was a car accident. My whole family was in the car. my mom passed away in the accident so no that's fine and it was tragic suddenly it was like a the first hit you know what i mean of like whoa 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 what's life so i was like hospitalized for like majority of that year had like three fractures in my back all this 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 scar and okay 123 three stitches on the body like it was a bad scene my god we as a family moved back to delhi to be close to our Yeah. extended family but if i could take you back to kashmir you mm-hmm. said uh, there were a lot of shoes like you mentioned there was satya pasata did you at that point get to meet any of them did you have like an experience with any of them that kind of stayed with you and you remember it as a flash okay and mr amitabh bachchan was there shooting all these films i don't even remember which one this was during right but like and we would all like walk uh, like my parents would obviously walk the kids in the grounds of the hotel yeah. and so would he at some point somewhere i fell i have this vision of these two long arms coming down and like lifting me up i have that flash he will of course not remember it yeah, you know yeah. and but i know this as a story yeah and it's a true one my dad was in college with mr gulshan grover mm. so one time when we came to bombay he called us to his set and he was shooting for uh, the movie saudagar mm. in film city yeah and that was my first time on a film set and i was like whoa 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 yeah. like 9 10 years old you know but somewhere in those years is where i think i secretly started harboring the wish to like you know do this but i took my first steps much later i took my first steps when i think when i moved back to new delhi and when i went to this international school there they had theater studies as a subject right so i i opted for it teen i didn't tell my dad until i was like 18 or so when it was time for me to go to college actually oh yeah i was like dad yeah. i don't want to i don't want to go to college <laughs> <laughs> i want to go to bombay and how did he react yeah man no he was like he wanted me to um, get a degree of yeah. course yeah. fairly like most parents like most course. parents do and kind of lied my way through that also I was like supposedly doing correspondence in Bombay while I was pursuing my other dreams, but like yeah, yeah. And so I haven't uh, I haven't graduated. 
so I was limited in my options. I was like, mm. I couldn't go to FTI or NSB or any, you know, like. Right. And then I went back to Delhi and I trained with Barry John. Mm. And I was like, I have no idea about what, how a film is even made. So let me just go to Bombay and try and get some experience, you know. So then I moved to Bombay in, in 2002. Oh. And I started working on my first film as an assistant director, which was a film called Q. Didn't plan to do more than one or two. Ended up working on four and then I was running out of time right and I was like man 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 I better make the switch if I yeah. intend to you know yeah so then I took another year off and then I trained at Lee Strasberg Institute in New York oh, wow you know joined a gym for the first time in my life yeah did all that and started pursuing acting yeah this was wow. now 2007 and here you are 21 here years later Eating before chicken we, salad. Yes. Yep. So before we get to the next question, maybe yeah. we should give this a shot now. Yeah, looks damn good. It really does. It does. Mmm. Nice. Very nice. Ah. Do yeah. you find it a little difficult to totally put yourself out there? I am not the greatest at putting myself out there the way right. uh, actors are expected to. Right. Uh, you know, ki partyo mein jao, mm. reel banao, you know, ye mm. karo, wo karo, engagement badao. I'm not, I, I do have a tough time with it. Yes, yeah. I just want my work to speak for me and it's the only yeah. thing I want to speak about, to be honest. Yeah. I could have many opinions on many things, but over time I've even learned to like, just there's no need, man. Just keep your opinions to yourself. That is something <laughs> that I was going to talk yeah. to you about because I know there was a point yeah. where you were very vocal about what you thought. I think it gets exploited. You know, it just becomes news bait and, and careers get destroyed over news bait and lives get affected over news bait and it's not yeah. fair at all. You just see it every day, you know, right now there's a, a comedian who is loved by everyone getting cancelled in the US. Sure, whatever, what people think of it is all up for debate, but yeah. it's up for debate. It's yeah. just like a really tricky time. I feel like the more you can stay out of the news, the better, boss. I'm going to move a little away from this conversation. Um, actually, in our lives, right, we always have a particular moment that kind of maybe molds us, defines us, and maybe makes us what we are in the larger scheme of things. Is there something that comes to your mind that really defines Arjun Mathur? Yeah, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to put it down to my uh, the, the death of my mother in 1995, when I was uh, 14 years old. As far as me, the human goes, yeah. that is the single most defining moment of uh, my life, my entire family, to be honest. Uh, when something like that happens, you are left with a bundle of issues, right? And then at some point in your life starts a play out of those issues, you know, that starts affecting uh, people around you, you know, you cannot be the victim and be like, I'm like this because I'm like this. You've got to take responsibility of what happened. Ajahn, if I could talk about your series, the one that I believe really changed your career, yeah, right? Yeah. You want to say which one it is? Made in Heaven. Thank you. Yeah. So can you tell me, after you did the first season of Made in Heaven, how did life change for you? My question is, yeah. as a person, yeah. what switched for you? What changed for you? I'm going to change your question, in fact, a Go bit. Ahead. Because it's not really... Made in Heaven was not about how my life changed. Okay. I know for a fact how many lives I managed to change okay. via Made in Heaven. I was in Chicago for this film festival and this couple came to me from across the United States okay. of Indian descent and they were like, we are here to meet you because like we are, they had just been married two months prior. Okay. And they were like, we are here to meet you because we are married because of you. Yeah, after watching Made in Heaven that we could convince our parents, they agreed to let us get married. There were cases of people having been able to just come out to their families or their friends or their workplaces and like that's what Made in Heaven did. Everything else is just like, um, is, is byproduct. The Emmy yeah. nomination is byproduct. The whatever, every, every success, every following project, everything else is a byproduct. Recently, I was reading an interview of yours uh, where you had said initially there were a lot of roles that you had lost to star kids. Would yeah. you like to talk about that? I'm okay too. I won't specify on which roles. Not but at all. Yeah, sure. Not at all. Yeah. yeah. It happened quite often. I remember a case of uh, where uh, there was this one film where I was literally told by a producer that like it was a two hero project, you know, mm. and I had like done this entire screen test with the other actor. Oh, we were friends. The producer called me to tell me they can't have me in this film because I'll overshadow the, the guy who my friend is, who was 
you know a star a relation right and um, i was like okay whatever i guess that's a compliment <laughs> number one it is not the the yes. the star not at all. kids fault or whatever yeah. it is whatever you want to yeah. call them nepo baby or whatever yeah. but yeah. like it's not their fault not at all. all right i just like born where they are born so was i yeah. if i had chosen to get into uh, hospitality and hotel line and yes. of course my father would be setting me up and like coming to the responsibility of of balancing things out yes again it comes it falls on the media uh, they have to support na people without the backing star kids are the ones that the only ones that they want to follow from the time they are age 3 80 till till the time they make their debut and mm-hmm. beyond and uh, how is it going to work it's not yeah. you know you got to give the same uh, level of importance to when there's an actor you see who's come from nowhere and like wow that he's really good the media has to support the audience is consuming what the media is supporting neither can you blame the filmmakers because they are at the end of it in a business i've had filmmakers tell me that they want me as the leading actor in their movie but like it's the ma- market economics that's not allowing it but these are all things that happened uh, many years ago i stopped yeah. giving a shit about it yeah. and just like i went down the path of doing more independent films you know i yeah. didn't want to be an embellishment in a star vehicle which also i did a bit of you know there was a film i did like it was a very central character in the film but the, just because the other actor in the film was like a star relation yeah. like my part was butchered in the film and, and that was a different time it was pre ott you know like people did get slotted as like ha he does the best friend role well so let's do that mm. i i didn't i didn't want to let that happen to me i mean i was looking at the indian actors who have received emmy nominations there's jim sarth there's uh, shefali shah nawazuddin siddiqui Radhika Apte, uh, me. Um, am I missing anyone? I don't think so. Veer wow. Das stand up. Veer Das, yeah. Yes. And I was like, wow, that's a good cast, man. Anyone listening? You know, like how we're doing that? Let's really? manifest this. Tell me one thing yeah. that you find common in that list. That we've never led a big budget production, commercial Bollywood. I think all of you came in yeah. to this world not knowing anyone and made it by your luck. Yeah. I guess it's great that there's an international recognition and validation to it but it's also sad na that like you do doing it here you're doing it to entertain your people yes. in those times when things like that this hap- did happen like if you were about to be cast in a film and took away or this other things that happen how do you kind of pull yourself out of it doesn't it kind of make you feel a little disheartened or make you feel like what's going yeah, on yeah of course but then in life there's many times and many things that will make you feel disheartened what are you yeah. supposed to do even with made in heaven for example like 5 years ago it was a very different world when made in heaven released yes. and there was a lot of like wow wow path breaking and amazing and how brave and this that and yeah. uh 5 years later to be honest i also had a bit of fear that like we live in a different world mm. now i could be called out for not letting a gay actor have this opportunity i remember you, you saying know? this earlier as yeah. well yes time you started your career to today as you sit here what are the few things you have you feel has changed for you as a person and not as an actor i'm not great at asking whatever psychological issues are behind that sure. we'll decipher with my therapist <laughs> you know yeah. they say that every 7 years yeah. every cell in the human body regenerates <laughs> itself completely so 7 years ago you were a completely different human from who you are today yeah. and this happens to us every 7 years so i'm turning 42 this year it's going to happen to me for a seventh time so <laughs> i've changed a lot many yeah. times yeah uh but yeah i kind of like where i am now thank That's you so much arjun thank okay. you